going to find himself then in perhaps by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting a weird, but Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how, how is Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. And I would say it's not the best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something. What's going on? In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and I thought she's dropped him all the way down at the order. But Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Dan Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hearing that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. You love the slipstream journey towards the chicane. Pearson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Barani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Pike's pushed more and fold up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Get out of go. Werrell, don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Stational run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like dropping. He's like on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. Moving on to the back end of Bill Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's okay. a lot of have fun. Yeah. It's all about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that, that Ron is uh, being enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is it really bunching up now?
Does he, he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's still such up. He's such a second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Triple Bypass Racing here on the JP Broadcast Network. It is round 11. It is North Wilkesboro, a track where moonshine is made and a lot of racing will come your way. Of course, my name is Bradley Dalton, and I'm going to be joined behind the cameras and with a sultry voice helping me out every once in a while. Mr. James Park will be here to enjoy this league with me. There's only a handful of races left here for triple bypass here in their season four but i'm very happy to tell you this one is a special special secret let's look at just some of the fun things behind in what we do here with triple bypass of course they have five nights of racing always coming through they've got mondays tuesdays thursdays fridays and saturday nights so be sure to check out triple bypass racing.com and join their discord if you want to get involved in triple bypass racing's runs now let's talk about points for a second round 11 of 14 here as we head into North Wilkesboro Speedway and it is going to be Sean Bradley who has the lead right now with 322 points who can catch him well between Ben Harkham and Al Corey that are 35 points and 38 points behind respectively Keith Hamlin in fourth Jason Benson in fifth John Campbell is right there in the mix with Matthew Harmon as well in that battle for the middle of the top 10 John the Naj Crutchley in P8 Ward Fisher in ninth and Mark Herzog is in 10th place. And that's after 11 to 14 races with two drop weeks applied. Of course, today's sponsor is the beautiful number 28 of Matthew Harmon. Big shout out to Matthew Harmon for the sponsor. And of course, this is a Thursday night. And you might notice the logo. It says secret racing experience there. And I'm happy to tell you that I know the secret racing experience. SRX will be coming for Tuesday night, starting in Season 5 here of Triple Bypass Racing. But I think that's enough of me talking and enough of me telling all the fun and the secrets here. James, good evening. Well, it's good morning to you, my European friend. But good morning. How are you doing? I'm all right, young sir. It's 1 a.m. Kenton Sportac. I tell you what, if there's any remotely half of that amount of yellows that you put in YouTube chat, I will literally, I think, physically go crazy. We are out at qualifying at the moment at this wonderful circuit here. It's going to be an interesting one. 0 0.625 miles, one kilometer just in length, 13 degree banking in the turns, three degrees on the straights. Now, you've been told this is not a great circuit for racing, Brad. I'm a little bit worried about that. I will not reveal my sources, but I was told very, very politely that cautions will be uplifted. Not saying that there will be a thousand. Of course, we've seen Triple Bypass go many, many races without a single caution. I've seen it with my own eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. But, but every... Everyone has their kryptonite, and I worry that North Wilkesboro might be it, based on the reactions I've had from multiple people when I mentioned, yeah, I've got North, Works North Wilkesboro on a Thursday night. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be bad as what everybody's making it out. Uh, to be honest, I don't think it will be. Um, you know, I'd be a little bit worried if it's that many. I've got to be honest. But, yeah, I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's not. I'm thinking it won't be. We only have a 20 car grid here tonight. So I don't think anything crazy is going to come out of this. And of course, again, as I said a few minutes ago, Triple Bypass is a very, very clean league. These guys race very well together. I don't anticipate anything crazy happening. And by golly, guys, don't prove me wrong, please. Don't prove me wrong, please. Yeah, we've got 170 laps of action that's going to be taking place here. So, you know, I think overall, mm, I'm a little, I don't know. I don't know. 
to be fair. I'm I'm just hoping it's clean ish. I I think it'll be good and competitive. North Wilkesboro, you can see kind of the pe- North Wilkesboro. I if I could pronounce the track name right, that would make this a better broadcast. You can see kind of the painted lines from this blimp shot, and if you look, it does set up for multiple lanes of racing through. Now, will the drivers actually do that? We'll we'll see how it develops through with our twenty guys as they go around but it three sets of tires a fast repair um i've been told to expect al Corey to win and i've also been told that if they run a green flag run it's 80 laps mm. for a fuel run so that would put it's two pit stops if they were to go green the whole time but i don't expect it you don't expect them to be green the whole time I don't, and it's simply because the fact that the race is 170 laps. It is simply because of the fact that you're expecting these guys to run around this six-tenth of a mile track for 170 laps, perfect, top to bottom. And this is a unique sort of track with the way it's set up. And, you know, if you look on the left-hand side of your screen, any driver could go a little bit wide and clip that wall there that's the exit to the track. Um, anybody can have a little bit of a moment and clip the pit wall. There's there's plenty of things that can happen here that can go wrong that can throw out a caution. I Again, I don't think we're going to see people just wrecking for the sake of wrecking, but I'm going to expect at least one caution in this race, James. Oh, I think there'll be one. Uh, you know, I, put, I think I put two in the YouTube chat earlier on. Um, so I'm optimistic that we might get two. I think... Everybody that's obviously never watched the triple bypass, you're going to sit there and be like, mm, okie dokie, maybe James is right and Brad is right because they are fairly clean. And generally, we don't see a massive amount of cautions. You know, I think we hit seven maybe at the most at certain tracks. And Kenton will know that me and him have been in a broadcast where we've hit like 18, 19, you know, and that was just physically insane. The amount of cautions we hit then so let's find out how we go but there's the grid on your screen there ready to go for you and sean bradley in pole yeah sean bradley the resident canadian in pole position ben harkham there p2 chad bear in third place with jason benson in p4 it's gonna be mark herzog in p5 justin bentley p6 dustin barton in p7 the next canadian on the grid matt Harmon in p8 and al corey in ninth place you got jc john campbell crispy cream in p10 ward fisher p11 keith hanlon in p12 from there you got mr naj crutchley in my favorite nascar number p13 Derek cat in 14th place anthony Sparaza in p15 kyle gresh p16 tyler royales in p17 michael seymour in 18th place justin hazlitt and grant Parker will round out your back row. 20 cars here, short track racing, Xfinity cars, and it is the Duff that is in the lead. I think it's going to be a fun little race start here, James. Yeah, I think it will be as well. I'm hoping it will be. I think if we can get at least midway, right, before we hit the first one, I think we'll be all right. If we could get to, say, 50 before we hit the first one, these guys aren't stupid, right? They know full well that they've got to you know, get the car warmed up and get the tires going and, you know, learn all of these things at the same time. It's not going to be a full flat circuit. Never in the month of Sundays. You know, you've just got to be sensible. Track temperature, however, is 125 degrees Fahrenheit, mind you. And the air temperature is 80 degrees. So the track is a little bit toasty here. So it could lead to possible sliding, but we'll just have to see what happens here, of course, this evening. Yeah, that track tempest went up a lot because during practice it was 112. So the fact that it's already went up above 120 is a little bit rough, but he's got it coming down the back stretch now. It's two laps under the pace car to set up for 170. It's going to be Mr. Sean Bradley and Ben Harkham. Who gets the jump? Well, from what I've been told, it is the inside line that you really need to keep your eyes on. But we know these guys on the outside can make something happen. Pace car peels out, and we are green, green, green underway here for 170 laps of secret racing experience and triple bypass as we go through. It is going to be Sean Bradley up the inside, but Ben Harkham on that outside line trying to make something happen in the 78. As you see, there's still two by two in the background here, and as we hit the backstretch on the outside wall, Sean Bradley rides. Can he get through? 
don't think he can. Now he's got to make the decision. Does he slot in or does he keep fighting? And as we end lap one here, it is Ben Harkham holding the lead there. Sean Bradley in P2, and it looks like they will slot back into single file. Yeah, Derek Cat hit the wall and unfortunately went off the side of the circuit. And that's why he's so far back at the moment um, there. And you can see the 18 car. Oh, Carl Gretsch is also a lap back here so Carl has missed the start or had some issues at the start but it will lap three out of 70. no real dramas i'm expecting this to be a very one lane i don't think we'll see anything crazy but then as i say that i'll go back to al Corey and he's got jc on the outside with the 55 machine of keith hanlon as well so yeah could go either way yeah i think you're going to see a lot of moments, but of course, Al Corey snaps loose there on the exit of four. And I think that's going to be the issue with side by side running is the inside guy is going to have to try to keep it inside. And hot track, and tires aren't going to like it. You're going to slide a bit. Things are going to get a bit battly here, but you can see there that Mr. JC John Campbell is going to keep it wide there. He does not want to cause any issues, but Al Corey here. Still keeping things side by side as they go and side by side in a merry-go-round where it stops. It looks like it's right about now because I think JC has pulled out enough there on the front. Checking back in with Jason Benson here up ahead. Benson and P4 just trying to keep the top three right at bay and also trying to keep Herzog there in the in and out machine just behind. Doing a fairly good job. Tactic is really, really going to make a problem for these guys. Yeah, I think they're going to be looking at tire sets if they can end up going green. Green flag stops are going to be very, very interesting because that exit into the pit lane is they've got to drop down on the inside of three to make sure that they can make it into the pit box itself. So it's going to be very, very difficult for some of these drivers to be able to get in. Um, and as you can see, it comes down now. There's the entrance to pit road. So it's literally off the corner. So you really want to run that inside line as best as you're physically good. Taking the wide line though, Benson. That's the thing. And with my hot tub tucked up behind him. So he's doing what he needs to be doing and, and just running the line. But it's going to be very, very difficult. Tire wear. That could be a bigger killer by the time we get to sort of mid-pack lap 30-ish. Yeah, you're not wrong. And I think the big thing to remember too is this is 170 laps. You've got to think the long game from the beginning here. And Tyler Rulliellis here back in the mid-pack is ooh, a big snap there as he goes in that SDSU car. Gets a little bit of a snap in the 87 to see more. He's going to sneak around there for P14. But you do really have to think the long game here. And you've got to think about the fact that we're running 170 laps. If this goes green, your tires have to last at least 80 laps for a true fuel run. I, ooh, Keith Hanlon, what are you doing there, buddy? Hang back a little bit from uh, Mr. Fisher. Yeah, I don't think it would be, you know, that need to worry too much, right? There was too many people, you know, I, like I did a truck race this week and I've been concentrating on just playing with trucks at Chicagoland. And um, I didn't even make it over the start finish line right at the beginning. A guy tried to send it free wide and literally sideswiped me coming up uh, um, against a wall. And I, mind you, I run the wall. So I was literally against the wall. So we had nowhere to go. And I didn't even make the green flag didn't even make the green flag at all and that was a 40 lap race you know these guys got 170 we've seen the guy at the back end up leading we've seen the guy two laps down coming through taking the win there's just no point battling away at the moment you know we've got chad bear sean bradley but they're not near anyone to do this so the only ones they're going to affect are themselves Brad. Yeah, and the thing is, too, Bear and Bradley are fighting for the lead right now. So, you know, it's a different conversation about when you're battling for the lead on lap 13 versus a battle, you know, for P18 early on. And, of course, it looks like we've got – I'm showing three cars out. Ooh, a big snap there from Chad Berry. Saves it on the inside line. But, again, that hot tire, that hot track there on the exits, it's making things difficult for these guys. But, again, this is where triple bypass really shows off that respect, that racecraft, and that know-how of all these drivers know each other. They know how they're going to run, and they know what they need to do to make things happen. But as I say that, here we go. Chad Bear gets enough grip on the tires, gets the exit out of four, and you got a new race leader on lap 15, Chad Bear, in P1 with Sean Bradley now trying to chase behind. Yeah, he is. At the moment. I'm trying to get a hold of Kyle Gretchen at the moment and find out what the hell went on there. Um, because he was on the track, he missed the start, then he was come back on again. Then he was a lap down, then he pulled back in again. So I'm a little bit confused of what Kyle Gretsch was getting himself up to in this mid-pack at the moment. Bentley 
is in that number 16. Still chasing down today's sponsor, of course, Mr. Matt Harmon in that 28 machine there is uh, sponsoring tonight's event so much love to him as we've got the triple bypass srx 170 here this evening 170 laps guys settling get your drinks get your popcorn it's like a guarantee uh, it could be quite an exciting one as we start getting past that midway point yeah now we're at lap 17 to 170 this is where things start to get fun. No yellows yet, nothing crazy going on yet, but Matt Harmon settling in nice and comfortable there in P6. I would say keep your eyes on Matt Harmon as this race goes on. A very, very strong driver. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get up in the field and get in the mix, but everybody's running their own race. Everybody's staying pretty consistent. Nothing too crazy going on. To steal your quote, James, no dramas in the beginning, no dramas at the moment. It is just truly everybody running their paces, running their laps and trying to just make this 170 laps go. Yeah, you just want to get rid of them. Like, uh, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but you just want to get rid of the laps. You just want to get them knocked off. Get into the last 10. Start then making your moves. Start then seeing what you can do and how you can go about it. Don't, don't worry on lap 20. Lap 20, just follow. Get rid of the laps. Pick a line that works. See how you can make it work. Can you get the tires bedded in or not? Has the... 12-1, the 14-1, or 16 to 1 on the steering ratio. Has that worked for you as well? Whatever you're using, whatever you're doing, you just got to sit there and think, right, what's working, what's not? And that's generally what I do over the first 20 laps of a race is just working out, right, what am I doing? Is it working? Can I make it successful? And that's the thing. You, you've got to be, you know, sensible. And I'm finding this week in officials in the trucks, it's not always sensible. I think you'll find any week in an official in any series, um, you're going to have sensibles and non-sensibles. It, it just it tends to be the thing, and officials tend to be tend to be a little bit of a of a feat of survival. You just have to make it through. Let some of the people eliminate themselves, and then you can really go racing. And as we see here, this is Matt Harmon on board. I said he was a driver to watch. Look at him; he's going to try to get up the inside there of Ben Harkum. He tries to look up the inside. He tries to make something stick here. Isn't able to at the moment, but he knows he's there. Ben Harkum knows he's there. Ben Harkum needs to find a run. And I like I like that Matt Harmon is running the slightly different line as we have our first caution lap 24. And who is that off on the side? Anthony Sparaza. Was this on his own, it looks like, as we exit through? So this is turn three coming around. Yeah. Just the tires didn't have the grip. Uh, I think, you know... It's interesting, right, because I was talking to, oh my God, I talked to so many drivers. What the blinking hell was his name? One of the Hazlitts, Justin or Thomas. And he was, do you remember that thing he was talking about with string theory? Yes. Talking about string theory. Now, for me, I thought he was chatting utter hogwash, right? And it was only till I watched a program the other day. And the guy was teaching another kid to do go kite, And um, he was literally talking about string theory. And he tied a piece of string to the kid's go-kart and said, right, can't go on the accelerator until your wheel's straight. And every single time, it took him ages. Like, we were talking hundreds of laps here before he got that right. You know, and that's the thing with Sparaza. You can't really throttle the accelerator until what time your car is settled and straight and that one thing alone has been helping me massively this week and i think people don't quite understand the concept of it but if you can imagine a piece of string going from your front column up to your steering wheel and and, and on your pedal and you've got to look at basically being able to do one at the same time to make sure your steering wheel is straight before you apply the throttle Maybe Sparaza needs to have a look a little bit, have a look at string theory. James, do you offer driving lessons, sir? Uh, no, I just, I, I was just too busy. I watched, I just watched this program. Because obviously I've been doing a lot of trucks, right? You know, I've had, like right. this week has been unbelievable for me. You know, I've been told by, uh, like, no offense when I say this, but Americans how English people shouldn't be in NASCAR. We should be going to do Formula One and all of this sort of stuff like you know and you sit back and you think dude you have no idea what you're talking about but it's that first person then 
is the one that's going spinning off causing a mass drama, you know? And I just think that sometimes people need to realize something that you've got to realistically think what you're going to do rather than just pretend you know what you're doing. See, and I think that's the thing with just humans in general is that they tend to they tend to flaw back on that. Mm. And they especially in racing, people in racing tend to just think they are so much better in the cars than they are and that's one of those things that i tend to see and it kind of catches me off guard especially when i'm running because i run the wheel and modified series mm. so when i'm running that series people really really think they're good and then they're not safety car peels off here or the iRacing pace car we are in nascar after all we're back green not 28 here and look at this it's harman to handlin Halen on the outside, Herzog, P3, Realis, and P4. As we go through, look at this, Harmon on the inside, Hanlon on the outside, and that Ghost Energy delivery, number 55, trying to run it through, and at the moment, it is going to be Matt Harmon. Oh, 160's in the today. wall. Ruelas is running in the away. wall. Ruelas in the wall, steps back down. The number 78 there of Harkham avoiding him very well, but tell you what, these cars are not going to like any sort of wall impact. It's going to just oh. upset them a little bit, and it's going to make it hard for you for a couple of laps yeah definitely and i think that's the thing with any form of racing it doesn't matter if it's xfinity or arca or gem 4 or trucks or whatever you know you've got once you get attached to a wall it is an absolute rascal to try and get off like you cannot literally pull yourself off you have to kind of slow yourself down and there's another caution coming now they're coming thick and fast and I think this one could be Tyler Ruelas or Mark Herzog. Herzog. Herzog is already round, isn't he? Yeah, something happened there on the exit of two. Is that net code? I don't feel like he should have spun there. Did the tires give out? I don't know. Give me two seconds. I'll go back. Just ignore everything. <laughs> so he's coming round, isn't go. he? Have a look there. Yeah, so he's coming up. He's fine. Rear tires gave out. Not enough grip. Hmm? No contact, no nothing. Just not enough grip. And you can see, man, he is trying to crank the wheel to save it. Yeah. But the problem is, unless you do something with that, there's not a whole heap it can do. You know, if you're, if you're trying to frawl out of it, you're not going to be able to get it done, right? Because it's just not going to be possible. As I've just had a complete and utter crash. So... This is nice. Um, two seconds. Mm. This did this for me today, actually. Come on. Yeah, it's. <sighs> I've got to do I got a feel for Herzog there. Mm. It's it's one of those like. I mean, you've got to push, you've got to run, but it also just becomes unfortunate now Herzog is down in P14 out of our 15 drivers on the lead lap and of course we've got Mr. Derek Cat three laps down still running Sparaza's out Kyle Gresh is out did we ever get an update on what happened with Kyle Gresh there by chance yes um <laughs> I don't really know if I want to read it out to be honest but he put I hit a corgi and it went straight through my car's radiator I'm, 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 not, oh. I'm not joking, that's exactly what he put. I hit a corgi and it went straight through my car's radiator. So, one of two things. He's pulling my leg. Be true here. Or he owns a corgi that just absolutely ruined his day. Because hmm. I know there was a conversation about getting Kyle Gresh to get a corgi in uh, the Discord at some point during the week. I I'm not going to bother to try to find it at this point. But, uh, so yeah, it, I'm not saying it's impossible. Well, okay. It's not something I've heard of. Oh, you don't have any pets that, you know, will come and run under your feet and attack your feet while you're trying to sim race and press the gas and the brake? Hey, I have a, I have a dash out that sits on my lap while I'm driving. Okay, fair enough. I have a uh, seven-month-old kitten, so um, yeah, my feet are fair play anytime they are in view and are moving. Yeah, no, I, literally, my my dash sits on my lap. Oh, 
Don't drive me. This is a quiet one. Everybody wishes they could have a pet like James, I'm not gonna lie. But nevertheless, the HD car pace car peels off. Green, green, green's called, and we are back here off of the second caution. It's Matt Harmon in the lead, today's race sponsor on this triple bypass SRX 170, lap 37 and 170. And we are back going here, and it is gonna be Chad Bear trying to run things, and we're not even into turn three. And James, we're hitting that run of cautions breed cautions. What happened this time, friend? This man. Naj Crutchley. Ah, oh, he got turned. Ah. Turned. Oh. By the one to the 60s. That's for uh, Ruelas. It is Ruelas. Yeah, turned and him then, all day, baby. And then Herzog was right there and couldn't get past. And man, that. Oh. Yep, yeah, we're going. Uh, yeah, Tyler Rowell has turned him. I wonder what happened with Ward Fisher after that as well. Ah, that's what happened. Let's mm. see how that one materialized or not. Sorry, was that just a random man in the truck? I was going to ask you about that because I had noticed that once or twice. Is that can, a... Uh... Can you see that man? I do see the man. Does everyone see the man? I assume everyone sees the man. Is that a camera problem or... I have no idea. I have never seen a man in the middle of the race circus. They just stood there. I wouldn't even mind him. He's about 20 foot tall. How did you two... What is going on here? Are they brake checking each other? What is, oh, I don't know. What is that? Got to realistically look at whatever's going on, but trying to ignore the fact of what they're up to. to be... trying to... I'm also struggling to get this back to live, which is really quite frustrating. This isn't the first time this has happened to me this week. Um, excuse me, I don't like, really like bringing the UI up, but unfortunately, that's the only thing I can do to get that back live. No, uh, there we go. Um, Tyler Ruel is still in here. No, he's not. He is out, out, out. So, Derek Cat is the last runner in 15th place. Yeah, so 15 cars surviving out of the 20 cars that started. We're lap 41 and 170 on the third caution here. And, again, we're hitting that point of cautions breed cautions. And the question becomes, James, what happens to break the cycle? Is it less cars in? Is it more people just running through? Is it a little stroke of luck will get things going? What is it that uh, what is it that will break the cycle here? Honestly, they've got to realize what they've got in front of them. They have got a mammoth task to get, you know, 60... Well, they still got 60 laps to get to 100. 70 on top of that. That's 130 laps remaining of North Wilkesboro. And at the moment, we're only on 42 and we're three cautions deep. This is either going to be running for a very long period to green now, or I'm going to need to go and stop for food and water by the time it gets around in the morning. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Matt Harmon and Keith Hamlin still haven't pit either, so I'm curious to see what those two drivers are thinking in the mix of things because um, they're running one and three right now. Chad Bear's pit, Corey's pit, and as we are green flag, we run the single file race restart this time. Is called through, and we go, and here we go. Harmon to Bear. Bear on the inside, Harmon on the outside. Who gets away with it? And it's still side by side as we exit out on the back stretch. And there we go, Chad Bear will bear his way up in the bed MGM on to turn three into the lead. And as we exit out lap 43, their single file, but back in the back, a little bit of three wide action there between Hanley, Corey, Bradley, and up on the inside, it is going to be Mr. Al Corey. I was told he's the race favorite and he's trying to get himself up into P3 here. And can he hold it? He's in the inside here on the back stretch. And as we hit three, I think he might be able to hold it here if he can get the grip on the tires. Why is he the race favorite? Do you know what what they actually said about why is he the race favorite? I don't know what they said. I just know I jumped in and I said, hey, who am I expecting to win the race tonight? Who can I say on the broadcast is winning the race? And Sean Bradley immediately goes, yeah, Corey. No question about it. It's going to be Corey tonight. That's all I was told. So the Can so it's one of two things. So the Canadian-American, can -Am, is going to win. Yes. Okay. And I told them I was saying it on the broadcast as if it was truth. 
and as if it was the expectation, and they all said, yeah, that's fine, because that's what's going to happen. And what happens if he doesn't win? Uh, well, then nobody write to me. Please file all complaints to Sean Bradley, the Canadian, and uh, I am sure you will get plenty of stories in the mix. There you go. That works for me. And thank you, Al Corey. Now up into P2, but has a two-second cap up to Chad Bear. Chad Bear, of course, on some brand new tires there. So, man, tire pace making a difference here, even on just lap 48. Yeah, I think they were always going to. You know what I mean? They were always going to make that difference. So, and you've got to use what you've got well. If they can go 80 on fuel, in hindsight, you can go 80 on tires if you treat them nice, right? If you Netflix and chill them. If you start thrashing yep. the granny out of them, then it ain't going to happen. They've got three sets, so he's done one already. He's got two to go. He's only got to get, I don't know, 100, maybe 120, and then change the next set, and then he's going to have a nice little fresh set for the end. What he doesn't want to do is cause himself be the yellow, because... What will generally happen is, is when you're trying to cause the yellow or you are the yellow, you can guarantee you've slid, which means you've locked up the brakes, which means you've flat spotted the tires, which means you've overheated the tires. And that nice little shiny set that he put on, I don't know, 30 laps ago or whatever it was, he put on 24, they ain't going to be so shiny and new anymore. Yeah, it's one of those that I... I don't know what, what sort of pit strategy I'd want to be on as a driver. We, we talk about it a lot, about drivers have different pit strategies. They have different preferences. They run different plans. I do not know where I'd want to be as a driver right now because anything can turn your plan upside down very, very quickly here. As we watch Dustin Barton there, the number 13 in fourth place, you can see a two-second gap opening up there as well. So, yeah, James, it's... I mean, it's very nip and tuck back and forth, and we won't really know who's where until the very end of the race, until Mr. Barney there in the flag stand drops that checkered flag through and really tells us who nailed the strategy right. And I kind of hate it that it's like that, but it also it makes it interesting. It does make it very interesting, and it's things that you have to kind of calculate out through. Um, Herzog and Seymour down a lap here, so 12 cars on the lead lap. How long does it stay that way, though, is... You can see Crutchley is down quite a bit here, and I'm pretty sure that our leader's going to catch him at simply a rate of knots. Yeah, we got, yeah, John Crutchley would be the last, but obviously, you know, Crutchley's been involved in his own little ta ta ta, should we say. So I think it'd be how many people finish on the lead lap, and it's also whether or not Bears got to green flag pit stop those tyres. Because technically, if he's going 24, he probably should go round about 74. That will give him one more set for about 125 for the run. So we'll keep an eye on Chad Bear and whether or not they can get to 74 before they go across into any more yellows. Yeah, lap 56 or 170 here in the 170 laps of SRX here in Triple Bypass Racing. One of just a handful of races we have left here in Season 4 with Triple Bypass. And of course, here on the JP Broadcasting Network, we absolutely love Triple Bypass, or at least I do. I know uh, James probably does, but I know I can say I absolutely love them. And if you want to see more of them, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the free things you can do to support JP Broadcasting Network and help us continue to bring you some of the amazing things, the amazing sim racing that we get to bring you here on the channel. Justin Bentley is just Jenkins, Kentucky. Not that far from me, actually pretty close i know jenkins pretty well and just continuing to reel in here and just reel forward ben harkham ben harkham one little mistake and he could be under some pressure here and i tell you what it doesn't look that far off to see uh mr justin bentley move his way up into p6 yeah i don't think it's going to be long um uh, bentley's looking a little bit speedy but then again last time out it was on a what was it 20.97 i think he was um yeah, and 2101, 2107 for Harkham. They're getting a little bit more slidey now. Bentley pitted on 24. Most of them did. Matt Harmon's still running on, on tires that he feels he can get to the end. So is Keith Hanlon. They've not pitted as of yet either. We've got Michael Seymour is sitting in pit lane at the moment. But Al Corey closing in on Bradley. I think must have just lost that place, actually, because I'm pretty sure... Wasn't he in front of Bradley, or have I just got 
completely confused. No, he did put a Sean Bradley. Ah, yeah, right. He somewhere. Yeah, he did right at the beginning. It's whether or not he managed to hold on to it, I suppose, if Bradley's gone. Yeah, Bradley's run on the outside, isn't he? So, yeah. But there we go. Oh, come on. See, we can't blame week 13 anymore, unfortunately. This is just a case of uh, iRacing being iRacing, I believe. But it's, it's not the end of the world here. We can, of course, continue to watch the race here. Chad Bear, Sean Bradley continuing to run through. And I tell you what, everybody's running very similar competitive lap times. I'm really enjoying it here and seeing things through. Ben Harkum now falling back there as uh, Barton and Bentley get through. Now Barton and Bentley going to go side by side there as it is going to be the number 13 of Barton on the outside, Bentley up ahead. And there we go, Ben Harkum. Get that position back. Sneak your way back inside. Do what you can here, friend. And move your way up. Back into P6 there as Barton will drop into seventh place there. The Toyota moving up against the Chevy and trying to run through the field. Yeah, Bentley's sitting in the only Ford at the moment in the top 10. Uh, Kat and Seymour, unfortunately, they're a couple of laps down. And then Kat is, what, four laps down, I think he is at the moment. So, unfortunately for Kat, yeah, four laps um, down. So, Bentley in the Ford, Kat's in the Ford, Seymour is out-out. So, we're down to 14 cars. And currently at the moment, it's a Chevy-dominated field with not many Toyotas in the field. Yeah. You know, I think the spread of cars is interesting to me. As we hit lap 66 and 170, look at that. Dustin Barton trying to run up against Mr. Benson there. Jason Benson up the inside there in the ghost livery car and finds his way through. What is happening Struggling. to Dustin Barton? Because he Struggling is having a tires, bad man. time. Yeah, he has rotted out of tires. He pitted on lap 24. And you can see he's high, he's low, he can't even get in. So just sitting there, he is literally badly on ice at the moment. You have hit what they necessarily call a brick wall, dear sir. Your tyres are gone unless you, you've heated them up. And now you need to try and get them calmed down here a little bit. But for, um, yeah, Barton's got to take a couple of laps just to lower the temperatures just a little bit. Unless he's going to go and dive in. Yes, yep. so he had Friday's tyres then. Yeah, good call from Dustin Barton here to dive in. You can see just how challenging this track can be. We see Barton in, and I wasn't even going to say that he was dropping like he was on ice. I was going to say it feels like those uh, Beam and G videos where they have the flying sledgehammers. It feels yeah. like it just smacked him backwards there. And oh, Ben Harkham, here we go, trying to battle out with Mr. Bentley. Justin Bentley there on the outside. I thought he tapped the wall a little bit, but still Justin Bentley able to pull out just enough of a gap on Ben Harkham to hold on to that P5 as it sits. Yeah, Ben Harkham in the Toyota, Bentley in that Ford Mustang, both of these guys down on that 24. Matt Harmon is doing a job and a half here because he's still not pitted. He, Matt Harmon's got to pit eventually. That's, that's all there is to it. Matt Harmon has to pit eventually. There's no way. And also, looking there we still have a mr keith hanlon that needs to pit so the fact that those two haven't pitted is surprising to me however we should be getting near the end of their fuel life so expect them to pull in very very soon unless they know something that we don't and that i wasn't told about before the broadcast um i they're getting to 80 didn't they the problem is is we've had three cautions at the time so I think overall, um, it depends on what their fuel saving ability is. We've lost Dustin Barton. He's appeared in YouTube chat all of a sudden. Um, so tell me more, dear sir. Well, that was something. I'm not really sure if that was something that he didn't enjoy or that was something that happened. So tell us more, chat. Tell us more. Yeah, and Tyler Royale is in chat. So how many yellows we at? I'm still calling it 10. Well, we're at three. three. Tires are like ice cream. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the temperature is skyrocketing. Like, you know, when you're, when you're looking at 128 degrees Fahrenheit tire temperature or track temperature, you might as well just... Yeah. 
give up. And it's good. <laughs> it's gonna keep going up. That's the thing. As this race goes, because look at the time in Sim, thirteen forty-two. So that's uh, one forty-two for those of you who may not read military time right offhand. It. The temp's going to keep going up. It's going to just continue to rise and rise and rise. Mm. So don't be surprised by that if that track temp gets over 130. No. Don't be shocked at all. It'll start calming down about 3 o'clock because obviously, you know, generally the sun starts going down. Um, so it should calm down a little bit there. We've got JC John Campbell, a resident Australian, who takes part in that Krispy Kreme livery machine. And recognize him from a mile away jc as he's running in seventh at the moment with 13 cars to the good now to say button was the last car running but unfortunately looks like he is out 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 as he's in youtube chat also san diego state won't be making to the sweet 16 but i showed the colors to represent them oh, okay tyler but then again you come in youtube chat saying there was going to be 10 cautions right and i've got your name twice written on my piece of paper so you know, you only had eight more to achieve there, buddy. You want to hit full ten? You see up in the wall, number one's in the wall. Literally, Derek Cat stuck to the wall mm -hmm. like Super Bowl. Yeah, the wall is painful, and I don't know if that's a case of Cat trying to be out of the way or what. And also, Tyler, just to mention the San Diego State, just to mention uh, San Diego State there, Tyler, um, as a Wildcat, born and raised, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse for you, so... At least you made 32. That's all I can say because, uh, yeah, UK fan here checking in, and it was uh, ugly. Mr. Uh, JC John Campbell continuing to put pressure here on Bentley and run things through. And at this point, guys, it's just single file running. It is a matter of survival. It's a matter of attrition. I'm looking at lap times. I mean, these guys are running nearly two seconds a lot slower compared to their best lap time. So, I mean, we're seeing... We're seeing the times come down. We're seeing things slow. You can see, or at least on my side, I don't know if YouTube's bringing it over and letting it look right for you all, but on my side, I can see the little heat waves coming up on how hot this track is. These guys, if this was real life, they're going to be feeling it. So I might be sweating a little bit. I know I'm sweating a little and feeling it here as we only have eight cars on the lead lap. Benson, Campbell, Bentley, Harkham, Harmon, Corey, Bradley, and Bear, who is in the lead by eight seconds. JC John Campbell, little tap of the wall there. Benson sneaks around, and you can see that they are not that far off from getting lapped as it stands. It is going to be very, very interesting battle here. And I got to say, James, there's some battles here, but things have also started to calm down at the same time. And now we're just hitting that issue of lap traffic. Yeah, Chad looks like he's basically going to try and lap everyone. Um, he's just got JC. JC's in eighth. Chad's now on a run round 42, and whoever said our Corey's going to win, well, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's starting to look rough. Yeah, if he, you know, if he's coming around lapping everybody into seventh, which is Benson, yeah, it's going to be um, a really tough one for everyone to, I think, get this back. I could tell you that much. So, yeah, good luck. There, Mr. Corey, as it's got literally 11 seconds on a 20 second lap, so he's only got nine seconds up the road before he gets over overtaken. Yeah, it's, it's a little rough. Do you think any of these drivers are hoping for a caution right now, or do they just want to run these laps out? And oh, mate, they have got to be begging, begging. They are literally begging, begging, begging for a caution. I can tell you that much because they've run for 87 laps. Some of them are on lap 24. So if you take 24 of 87, it leaves you 63. They're running 63 laps on these tires with 128 degree track temperature or something. It was up that high, wasn't it? Yeah, 128 degrees. And they're going to be melted. It is literally, these will be falling off the cliff very, very quickly. And they're going to feel it. And the times are just going to go up and up and up. Best time for Chad Baird, 20.05. Last time, 21.41. 1990, 1997 for Sean Bradley. And he's now on a 21.08. So it's two seconds per lap difference between what was possible right at the beginning and what was possible after. I mean, Corey could take it if leaders take each other out. But there's nobody near him. The only one that's going to take Chad Bear out will be a bat marker. And if anybody does that, man, 
That's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah, that'll be. Uh, I wouldn't be worried about the conversation. The booth, and there's the number one. There's Cat getting loose and snapping around. Did he keep it going? And also, do you still have a random guy floating around? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, I've got a random guy floating on my screen at <laughs> random intervals, so I thought I would check with you, sir. Um, I'm in the cockpit. Now, normally he was stood here. He was stood about here, but he ain't there. So I'm not quite sure where he's gone. Wherever he's gone, if he could pick me up a burger, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a nice uh, Coca-Cola. Would be great for me. Coca-Cola. Nice Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola. It'd be would, great. Would one like a Coca-Cola? Very nice. Yes. Yeah, you said it like you were well pushed then. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, Chad's gone, look, he went, Chad went to finishing school. Uh, there, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, yellow flag's out. Who is this one? Matt Harmon. Matt uh, Herzog. Or maybe Herzog. Herzog and Harmon. Yeah. Herzog and Harmon. I have a feeling you're going to be writing their names down. I am. Goes on my little sheet. Tells me who was involved. What lap it happened. Uh, well, Briggs and Harmon. He did not hold the brakes. On lap 89. Let's see if we can please come back to live pictures. Can't do it. Oh. No, we can't. It's not. It's just. It's okay, though. It's, uh, yeah, excuse me. I'm bringing up the UI once more. I do apologize. This is the only way I can get you back. I'll tell you what, let's have a chat with um, a driver. Where? Uh, who am I want to get out? I want to get hold of Harmon. Where are you? Where are you? Are yeah. you. Matt, are you in your boot? see him i got him yeah he's not going in the pit lane is he that's the problem all right yeah matt you're gonna pit you're gonna stay out you're gonna, pit, he's you're gonna, gonna stay, stay out. out he's gonna stay out right we're gonna have a chat we have uh, today's sponsor one mr matt Harmon. matt welcome into the booth buddy how are you doing good guys how are you well mate i, I was an, I'm, I'm i'm a little bit upset um that's due to the fact that i was expecting you to pit so i could have a conversation with you a little bit but you haven't pitted yet and you're the only one that's not pitted. Oh, okay. As I say that, I'm going to shut up. Get in your pit box. Don't mess it up. All right, guys. We in here. There you go, buddy. Um, yeah. So um, tell us about your sponsorship today then, bud. Who is it we're supporting here? Secret Racing. So that's our new SRX league that we're going to be starting on on Tuesdays in place of the late models. Okay. Tell us more. Come on. It's like feeding the carrot, giving the dangling the carrot, and never feeding the donkey, Matt. <laughs> now we, we're switching it up a little bit. Uh, everybody likes the late models, but we're going to switch it up and try out a new car and a different group of tracks. So. Dirt, dirt tracks. Well, we have two dirt tracks on the schedule right now. Okay. Have I lost Matt here? Oh, are you still here? Matt, you still no, here? I'm still here. I was, I'm getting around a couple cars here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Concentrate. So, so when are we looking at this one coming up then with, with, what you got to do there, bud? Get back into your, yeah. So when we're looking at starting this one up, and what are we expecting, and, and what's the, can you tell us anything about the car itself? I personally have only gotten to drive the the car a couple of races, just playing around. Um, Al and some of the other admin, they've invited me out to help admin that league on Tuesday night. So we're we're just looking forward to doing something different and trying something new. Okay, well, let's pop you back in there, Matt. I would look forward to seeing how you get on for the rest of the race there, buddy. But good luck, dude. Thank you, guys. There you go. Short and sweet. Matt Harmon's up and running. Just got him before the green flag, and we're off and running here, bro. Yeah, here we go. Chad Bear in that number 91 away. Sean Bradley there in P2. Matt Harmon in third place. We're watching him battle here with Mr. Al Corey going up the inside. The race sponsor and the race favorite side by side here as we go through and there we go out onto the main straight it is al Corey in third matt Harmon's going to slot it back into fourth but yeah i'm really excited about the srx is coming up i actually it, 
if it runs over the summer and my Tuesday nights are free, I might race in the league. You, you might have a conversation there, Jane. We might race. We might commentate. We'll see how things go here. Matt Harmon trying to get around Al Corey yet again. Up the inside, side by side out of four, down the main straight. And you can see there, Matt Harmon just, he's doing his best to get things through. Fresh tires, fresh front end on that car, thanks to his one fast repair. So hopefully no other trips into a wall or another car. And... We just keep things going. We've officially ticked off lap 100 and 70 laps to go here, James, as we keep things moving. Oh, man, I realize what that is, that car. I'd have to buy that car. I don't own that car. Yeah. Huh. There we go. Another one on to the uh, 89 cars or whatever it is I already own. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Music counting Right, so on lap 102, 68 on the clock. Oh! Bro, what oh. the shindigging went on there? Man, Matt, you're still running Xfinities. We're not running. Oh, and he used his one fast repair on the last pit. Yep. Our race sponsor is out. Dude, he snapped. Was that a hardware failure? I have no idea, but he snapped to the other side well quick. Comes in and then it just literally nearly breaks his hands. No, he just... Just an immediate right turn. Yeah, grip, 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 grip. And he just gripped for days. And unfortunately for Matt, the wall was there, dear sir. The wall was there. I want to say that's a hardware failure. I'm going to... I'm gonna have to ask because that was um strange. Yeah, that was rough. Mm. Man, I you gotta feel for him. Yeah, you have. At the same time, it, it's um yeah, caution number five. Yeah, like caution number five, but none of these cautions have been really really egregious in my opinion there's been nothing that's really caught me in the i i don't know how to phrase that but there's been nothing crazy no i've you know wanted to stand up and protest and throw a fit i don't think you're you're able to for some reason i've lost all sound out of iRacing. racing this is really weird of what's going on today uh, my eye racing is still at quarter speed, James, so I'm not sure exactly what's happening. So, I'm not sure exactly what has happened. There we go, he's back. Oh, what's going go? on? Now I think we're back live. Yeah, we're back. We are back. Apologies back. for the, um, technical issues, but when something doesn't work, it causes everything else to break. So it's a little bit annoying. Tyler Ruelas. SRX confirmed. Yes, 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 in all caps. Nice. So I have a feeling SRX is going to be a popular decision. I do like the light models, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy those cars, but I think something different is going to be good, and I think a league like Triple Bypass can pull off something different. Yeah, I think they can. They've got enough of the following. There's enough of a base there, isn't there, to be able to swap around with the cars. So I think overall they're do going to be doing a... Um, absolute stellar job so yeah it's going to be an interesting one here brad i think moving forward could be an exciting one yeah uh, matt Harmon in chat felt it go loose and then it snapped the other way that's my race chad has the car to beat today well chad bear will be starting in p1 here in the vet mgm number 91 so we'll see how chad bear can do and i'll be a fun real life story here i've actually got former co-worker that left the company I'm at that works for BetMGM now um, when they expanded out into where I'm at in my part of the country. So, as we say that, we're green, 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 we're away and back there. Or, sorry, the 57 Herzog gets away very, very slowly but as we go. Here we go, Chad Bear, Sean Bradley, Al Corey, uh, Mr. Jason Benson, Ben Harkham, and Justin Bentley. The six cars on the lead lap. You got JC John Campbell there. Hamlin, Fisher a lap down. Fisher Hamlin battling through, going through. Chad Bear, Sean Bradley. Hope things to the ball. And 
The question of the day is, can the Canadian catch up to Chad Bear? Chad Bear, we heard from Matt Harmon, has the car to beat as we're lap 109 of 170, about to beat lap 110 of 170, and we just keep things going nice and pretty as you please here in the front. Everybody's going to keep it moving. Everybody's going to keep it grooving. The Emperor's new group is underway, and if the Emperor's Chad Bear is going to just keep rolling here. Sean Bradley, what can you pull in that 77? And you know, this is going to be where the problems start to hit when you have such a small running of cars here. We've only got 12 cars running, and really out of those 12 cars, only 10 of them might be in the mix here with, of course, Herzog three laps down and Cat five laps down. So your top 10 out of the 20 that started, really the only ones that could be in a mix of things. And in reality, it's only the top six on the lead lap. So James, at this point, the question becomes, how competitive do we see things get here to the end? Um, I don't. And that, I, I, Bears had a lot of pace. So unless he makes a drastic mistake, and then, like Matt Harmon said in YouTube chat, but we go loose and then it's snapped. Yeah, he, he loosened up. And then the car just decided, no, oh, I'm going to give you as much grip as you can ever supply here. And he turned right to try and get it to stop, and it just wouldn't have none of it. And next to it, bang, it kicked in into the wall. And as you say, it's almost the same kind of scenario when your hardware fails. You know, your, your wheel turns instantly left or instantly right. and Normally, your car goes with it, so, yeah. I think Bear, if he can get a run like he did over the first 113, I think he's going to be very hard to catch. Yeah, it's going to be very, it's going to be very close, but I need to see Chad Bear get the run. Of course, everyone pitting under that last caution, so as we see, things are going to, things are going to stay very competitive. Well, actually, correction, everybody put it under lap 93, which I don't believe was our last caution. Lap 114 now. And I see that Mr. Knowledge Crutchley put it lap 103. So, I, it's, everyone's on pretty much even turf here, but it is Chad Bear that's had the pace advantage all the way through. I mean, look at it last laps. A 20.1 to a 20.4 for Chad Bear versus Sean Bradley. So, plenty of pace and running to be had. Back in the background there, Mark and McCorry are absolutely duking it out for P3 right now. They're side by side in the background and continuing to run and in the end it is going to be part of ahead of Corey, which is good to see on my side. Yeah, definitely. I think um, any battle is better than no battle. Right? Let's, let's be honest about it. We've still got the guys that are lapped down here. Keith Hanman and JC, they're still battling their half on the circuit as well. John Crutchley, Ford Fisher is another lapped car battle. Um, so there's all to play for for them and, and even if you're a lap down you know JC's still going to be wanting and being in that car going I want to hold handling up for as long as possible here. you know I, I want this place JC's not gonna you know this guy fights fights kangaroos and wrestles crocodiles for a living you know he, he, he definitely ain't gonna let handling get through without rolling over I'll tell you that much yeah no uh JC John Campbell there I love the Krispy Kreme livery it's the issue with Thursday nights is every time I commentate triple bypass on a Thursday, it makes me want Krispy Kreme. Yeah. I'm going to have to go get Krispy Kreme over the weekend. i got to go to uh, my local Krispy Kreme shop and pick up some fresh donuts. I'm going to make sure they have the light on. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and well, you're quite lucky you've probably got one down here in the street. I've got one about 10 mile away or something ridiculous like that if I Googled where my nearest one was. Um, the joys of living out in the country, unfortunately. So, yeah, but now we're getting into that 120 mark, 50 to go. They're going to be starting to think where they want to be, where are they going to be. Chad Bear's going, well, I just want to go around everyone again. So he's going to carry on trying to catch up to the sixth place man of Bentley. Bear's coming into turn one. Bentley's going into three. So it ain't going to be long, I don't think. Maybe in the next 10, 15 laps, I think Bentley could be under the cosh. Yeah, it's going to be very very close through and i'm just looking at lap times i'm looking at different things here chad bear fastest lap 19.8 flat and sean bradley fastest lap 19.81 last laps 20.55 chad bear sean bradley 20.63 and if you're wondering about everyone else through bitson last lap 21.24 21.0 so you can see some of these guys really struggling to keep the pace under yeah again James, we talk about this, I feel like every time we broadcast this Xfinity series, but it is, there is the sort of endurance aspect of it. This is a little bit longer of a race, 
So these guys just have to make sure they're surviving the whole time, too. It's not necessarily about, you know, being the fastest. You also have to be consistent. Properly. Yeah, and I think that's what the guys have found out that aren't in the race anymore. Obviously, Harmons was a little bit different, right? We saw that. But Barton, uh, Seymour, Ruel, Esperanza, um, Carl Gretsch at the beginning. I'm not entirely going to say it. I don't think that Cor <laughs> Corgi hit the Corgi in his car. So it was random. But there we go. Um, but everybody else, you know, Esperanza and Ruelas have had their issues. And I think just it's just about now endurance racing this track. It's you against the track. It's not really anybody else that's in and around you. You've just got to make sure that you're getting past them. I think that's the thing. Yeah, and the, you don't want to do anything silly to compromise your race at this point. You're at 126 out of 170, and there's no sense in trying to dig up those extra two or three tenths at the risk of bending your car into a wall. There's no sense in it at this point. At this point, it's better to finish than it yeah. is to finish last. And you just need to keep the car on the track and keep it going. If it means you're a couple tenths slower than the leader each lap, let it be. Let it be. Chad Bear has shown since the green flag that he's been competitive. And even the driver saying, you know, Chad has the car to beat. Just let it run. Let it run. Let it ride. Don't be upset by it. Any finishing place at this point is going to net you some points and is going to be pretty good for you. Yeah, even Derek Cat down here in the Grave Digger livery, you know, he's five laps down, still going. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about enjoying your racing. You learn everything, learn something every day. You know what I mean? Every day you're racing, you learn something. And for Derek, he's out there now just learning absolutely heaps. He's just gone down another lap, unfortunately. So six laps, Chad Bear's just gone around him again. Um, but he's still learning, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? You just got to make sure that you learn, learn, learn every time you go out on that racetrack. And some of these guys, it's going to be a massive learning curve. Yeah, and the thing is, North Wilkesboro, as we've seen, is not a simple track. It looks like a simple oval, but these drivers are having a heck of a time holding on to it. You know, uh, we've been talking about at the very top of the broadcast, you know, when I tell another person that it's a North Wilkesboro race, it's one of those like, oh. eh, good luck sort of moments. And oh, Derek Cat yeah, yeah. with a little bit of a moment there. Yeah, I think mean, he just slowed up. I think he slowed up and not realizing where he was and, and went on the opposite side, unfortunately. And um, for that moment of lapse where he ended up basically going off the side of the circuit. But you're right. It, it is just now going through. You, you want to get this done. If you're in that top 10, you do you yeah, vitally important to try and get some points on the board. And, and Sean Bradley's got to carry on in second. Ben Harkham um, is um, not here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is. He's in third, sitting second in the championship. He needs points. Al Corey needs points. Keith Hanlon, Jason Benson, you know, they, they're all needing points to keep up this championship push that they're all going for. Yeah, and that's the thing to look at again. We're, you know, Two drop weeks applied, just a couple weeks left. Guys, the points battle is close. It is a close run for everyone, so they've got to just keep it moving, keep it grooving, and just let it run, let it ride. Sean Bradley, Ben Harkham, Al Corey, as they sit P234, that is your P123 right now in the points. So it is very, very nip and tuck going into the final three race weeks of course this is going to be number er, sorry yeah this is number 12 yeah. two weeks after this yeah we got this one and two more so you know the weirdest thing is chad who's out in front leading by 3.7 seconds not even in the top 10 of the championship so, there's a lot that i don't know if he's been here each week obviously we haven't done continually eat peak at the moment and Chad is closing in on Ward Fisher then he's going into ninth place of Crutchley again and then in front of that is the sixth place man of Jason Benson so or Bentley so literally as we said 10-15 laps it was going to get him well nearly been that and he's nearly got it yeah I reflect Chad there on my stat sheet somebody can correct me on this, is being number 12 with four race starts and four race wins. Is it? We've done it. Yeah, it, it truly does. I, he's, 
he's going for the five for five, which, oh, that is not going to help his cause at all right there. Um, is he out? Is he out? Out? Uh, yes. That bear is gone. Uh, my jaw is... All right, um, James, you might need to fly out here to the States to uh, pick up my jaw off the floor. Um, yeah, Chuck Bear is probably just going to be sitting in the car having kept about now. It's something that's been horribly wrong. And um, he's... Oh, no, he's back on. He's reflecting P6 for me now. I believe it's the same for you. So yeah. What Don't know. I don't know before you ask me what happened. I have no idea. Well, I he disappeared well, and he come back and he's in sick place. So, at least he's in six and not just completely gone. But yeah. that uh, puts this race up on its head here. Um, Sean Bradley, run away. Yeah, well, he's got a 15 second gap now. The bear. Uh, the problem is, his bear has got Bradley coming round. I don't think Bradley's got the pace get past Bear, but I think Bear's got the pace to catch everybody in front of him over the next, what we got, uh, 28 laps. Yep. I, um, uh, I'm gonna be very interested to see how this works. Wow, uh, uh, things. Chad Bear up the inside of Naj, I... I'm not sure. This... He, he, he went off in the time machine and come back in. came out the wrong way. He probably wanted to come out about 30 laps ahead, and he came out uh, 15 seconds behind. Yeah, so that's probably not what he wanted, but uh, there we go. Definitely not, but he's now going to be on a mission to try and catch the guys in front, and again, he's got pace for days. But is he going to get Bradley in the amount of time you've got remaining? 26 laps. Um, going to be a tall order. He's coming up now on fifth place, Justin Bentley. So Bentley's just in front of him there. Might get Benson. But after that, he's going to struggle. Yeah, it's, I don't think he can catch it to the end. I, I genuinely think Chad Bear just lost his race. He's off of a random glitch or whatever that was. I'm going to be curious to watch the chat after um, and to watch the Discord to see if I can find out exactly what that was because that's I mean I don't know what you say to that with 25 to go now on the clock I don't mate I can't ask the I've never seen something I've never been looking this if he's managed to blue screen or whatever has happened and then he's got back in within 15 seconds he must have a super duper pooper scooper computer um because I couldn't do that. Yeah, no, that's um, yeah, that's superhuman internet. I, I gotta wonder. I, ugh. ah man, I feel bad for him though. I don't know. That's all you can do is sit and feel bad. That's the thing. Like, and it's the unfortunate part of sim racing. It's just like you know, if you watch any racing series and the driver's engine blows up, unless their name is Max Verstappen, um, you, you can't help but just sit and feel bad because just something happened. But this situation, all you can say for Chad Baird, you know, this is the equivalent of reliability issues. Yeah, I didn't feel bad. I really did. For the F1. Oh. I, I can't say anything. You, you know where my allegiance is lying, F1, though. That's just how things are. Yeah, no, I didn't feel As, bad at um, They say karma is a wonderful thing, and, and maybe... Karma come around and bit that young man on the bottom. So. Yeah, I mean, everyone's winning streak has to end eventually. Yep. Uh, kind of ironic thing that was Chad there before, before the league and now dropped down into uh, fifth place with 21 to go here. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Chad Bear. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we, very, very shortly where we go into that last 20. Chad is sitting in 15th at the moment. Uh, 15th, I should say, 10 seconds, I think, 
behind Benson, 14 seconds behind the leader, and that's coming down every single lap by about 21.06 to 21.17. It's not enough. He needs to be getting a second per lap over Bradley to even remotely get anywhere near him coming in. Yeah, and I don't see him doing that with 19 to go. I don't think he has the tires. I don't think he has the pace to do it. There's there's no way unless he's got some sort of nitrous button in that car and can just turn it up like we're in a Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift or something. Too Fast, Too Furious, however many of those movies there are now. Ten. Ten movies. There's ten of them. Ten. Yeah, Fast X is the... Is the Seconds, the last one, and Fast 11 or Fast 10 Part 2 will be the last one. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. What do you get about Why? Why so many? Why Why do we have to. Because when you're milking. 11... It's like milking a cow. The cow will constantly produce milk, so therefore you will constantly continue to do it. The Fast X series continues to be continually, sorry, produces money. They continue to be making it. That's why they're up to fast 10. Oh, man. Chill Bradley's got 13 seconds over currently Chad Bear. So, yeah, so if the movie's continually making money, why wouldn't they continue? Like the Mission Impossible, so I don't even know how many there is now. Then six or seven or, seven or eight of them. Fun fact I've never seen a Mission Impossible movie. Fun fact I only ever watched the first one, I've never watched it again. That tells me that they're probably not that good. No. Oh. However, I did watch Maverick Top Gun 2 today. Yeah. Quite enjoyed that. I've watched Top Gun several times over. That is, um, hands down, one of my all-time favorite movies. That what, the original or the new one? The original will always hold a big place in my heart. The new one does hold top five, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. It I'm is good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's one of the... It's one of the few movies that they did, and they kept it true enough to the original, but added enough to it, and didn't try to overdo it. They didn't try to milk it, make it cheesy, anything. It was very, very good. Yeah, they did bring back everybody, which is good as well. There was, you know, don't get me wrong, Kelly McGillis now, compared to what she looked like back then, is, man, that's a, a completely different story all on its own. Um, to be fair, <laughs> because yeah, the difference is insane. But I believe she's had some health issues. It's not made her um, look anything like what she used to. Um, so there we go. And obviously, you know, I think going forward, I don't know if they're going to do another one, but hey, if they did, I'm sure they do it right. But Chad Bear has closed up and he's bared down on Benson and is just about to get Benson. It's whether or not he's going to have enough with 10 to go. You get Corey as he goes in to one. Corey's coming out of three, so yeah, that's going to be an interesting. One. I don't think Chad Bear has enough pace to get Corey. Oh. I'm not saying it's not possible. I just don't think there's enough time. I think maybe an extra five laps if he can do it, depending on how quick he clears Benson. Yeah, exactly. And he's literally a whole corner in front of. The first place man, Bradley. So he's Bradley's over the back straight. Bear's just coming up the start the finish line. So they're about half a track apart at the moment. As Bear looks like he's just about to get the run on Benson as a side by side. For how long? Benson's going to try and continue to run that outside line. Bear says, Nope, I've got the inside, mate. It's worked for me all day. It's going to work for me here. And I'm going to leave you in the dust. And that's exactly what Chad Bear has just done. Yeah, Chad Bear around on the inside, gone, says adios, muchachos, I will see you later, and gets things out and out of the way, and there we go, Chad Bear now up in the fourth place. Again, your longtime leader was told he was the car to beat by several of the drivers, and now we find him down in D4 after, I don't know what happened there, could have to ask though, to find out later on, because seven to go, Chad Bear, it's a case of what could have been for Sean Bradley, the Canadian. He started on pole. He's going to finish on the top. There he is in the number 77 Duff Machine. Looks like he should get the job done unless anything dramatic happens over these last five, which is going to be this time around. 
it comes over the line you see it turn five in the top left and we're down to the final five laps within the next minute we should find out whether or not bradley's going to take the win here. yeah five laps here and is justin bentley going to get lapped is my question and i i have to say if i was justin bentley i might not let that happen because you've got not structure right there in the mix which of course I don't think there's any competition there, but you just, you don't want to cause any sort of crazy issues. But then again, if you let him lap you, the lap, the race is done about a lap earlier. It, it's a, it's a case of, do you want to be the last driver on the lead lap or the first driver a lap down? And there we go. He lets the leader up the inside. No harm, no foul. And in that case, it is just the top five on the lead lap. And that's Benson, Bayer, Corey, Parkham, Sean Bradley, three to go at the line here in the SRX 170. Yeah, it is, and at the moment, Sean Bradley is taking it here, yeah, despite how lucky he feels or whatever the insights or expectations have been coming in. Still had to complete the race, and he's done it. Three to go, two to go now. One more white flag this time around. We're going to find out very, very shortly. Yeah, not a, not a crazy race. We did have, you know, a couple instances of cautions, precautions, but nothing to write home about nothing oh. to have a conversation about here and as we have sean bradley coming around checkered fl or white flag is out i'm jumping myself a lap early here sean bradley bring it around home you got one more lap and it does look like that this should be his race with no issues he's gonna bring it down into three just keep it nice and simple and for sean bradley he started on pole it looked like it was chad Stop. bear's race to win but yeah. bear bear down and sean bradley comes around Best last name you can have. Bradley says that Sean Bradley wins. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, you're just making it up. To be fair. I mean, you know, my first name is his last name. I'm just saying it gives a little extra five horsepower. I don't know. We can make that up somewhere, really? right? Arkham... <laughs> really? It's unofficial iRacing. Unofficial iRacing lore only for triple bypass racing only for this race. Sean Bradley gets the extra horsepower and wins it through. Ben Harkum in second, Al Corey in third. Chad Bear is going to be asking what happened. Jason Benson in fifth. And then it's Bentley and Campbell, Hamlin, the Naj Crutchley in ninth. Ward Fisher will be in 10. Mark Hertzog in P11, Derek Cat in P12. Matt Harmon in P13 did not finish. Dustin Barton in 14 didn't finish. Michael Seymour did not finish. Tyler Ruelis did not finish. Anthony Spagrazza did not finish. And Kyle Gray hit a corgi somewhere, which I... Uh, he's still I going on. To ask him. Yeah, he's still going on about it now. I, I don't know. I don't think it's over here. He's sure going to burn out the tires. But he gets a ball. Nope. Does, I was about to say, does he have the tires to burn at this point? No, I mean, he's all <laughs> done. But right, there we go. I yeah, know. All right, who would you like to have a chat with? You want to start one, two, three, or are you going to go three, two, one? Let's go three, two, one. Let's bring in Al Corey, because I need to have a conversation with him. There you go, he's in the booth. Mr. Corey. Corey. Good day, good day. Good evening. Good evening, but what happened? I was told by official sources you were the race favorite. That was uh, totally fabricated and made up. I uh, have no chance against some of these fast guys, but I am thrilled with my top three. Yeah. You were up six places on the day, though. That's got to feel pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a very good qualifying. I think I was third on the speed chart in practice, but I didn't have a good qualifying, so started in, I think, eighth or ninth. I don't remember. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, boy, was it a handful. That car was a handful tonight. Yeah, it seemed like everyone was really running on tires, yourself included. There were a couple moments where we were watching on stream and I was just like, Ugh, I was going to run it in the wall. So what could you do to keep that car under you for the whole race? Well, the important thing was being very easy on throttle uh, on corner exit. You saw what happened to Harmon there. He got by me on a really good pass. And then the very next corner, you know, he goosed it a little bit and that thing just snapped on him. So you had to drive like you know, so careful on exit. That was the key. Yeah, the key there. And then, of course, Al, as is tradition here, uh, 30 seconds, floor is yours. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to shout out. 
Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Matt Harmon for sponsoring the race, of course, and uh, I hope that uh, the, the boys in the late model series um, are enthusiastic and excited about tonight's race name because that was a big clue as to what's coming next season. Yeah, I can already tell you that Tyler Royales has uh, put in YouTube chat in all caps, SRX confirmed. Yes, yes, yes. And I even made the comment to James. I said, am I going to be broadcasting or am I going to be able to race? Because I, I think it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to trying that car out. We've done some testing. It's a great car, uh, less grip than the late model. Um, so a little harder on tires and probably a little racier. The late model was terrific, but... Um, didn't didn't make it for very good passing so we'll see what happens but that's it for me thanks guys for doing the broadcast tonight yeah thanks al looking forward to talking to you later and seeing how this season turns out and seeing how things go in the future have a good night cheers all right james let's pull in mr ben harkham in second place there ben good evening my friend it's a p2 right where you started in the toyota in the yoda how how did North Wilkesboro treat you, friend? It didn't. It didn't. He he ran a Toyota, and uh, it did not treat him. No, he's gone. I'd probably move on on that one. Yeah. So we'll uh we'll uh, say Ben Harkham had a great race. Started P two, finished P two. But let's pull in our Canadian here. My my official inside source here for all things of who to root for. He told me it was Al Corey, and secretly it was him. Sean Bradley, how did yeah. North Wilkesboro treat you tonight, my friend? Uh, better than it usually does. I mean, uh, well, surviving, uh, you know, the wreck, surviving, almost wrecking myself several times and surviving network issues just brought me here. So uh, that's what it is. Yeah, kind of, it was a very nip and tuck race. And I really, really thought that uh we really thought chad bear was gonna have it and then all of a sudden it just got handed in your lap how do you as a driver how do you react to that when it's one of those you know i didn't expect it and then i get it uh well i reacted with utter confusion at first and then uh you know some relief but there was still 30 laps to go at that point so it was just kind of try to save my tires look at the relative because i knew ben was coming he's got that short run speed a lot uh, so, you know, trying to find the balance of that and not spinning out. Yeah, and Sean, do you know what happened to Chad Bear? Because we spent several, several laps here in the booth, both just going, I don't know what happened. Do you know what happened? I don't know what happened. It was like the worst blink in history. I don't know how that happened, but it, he, he came back like as if nothing happened, like a regular blink would. And But then he was like a lap down in sixth place, I think. So I, it was just really bad luck, honestly, for him. Yeah, but really bad luck plays into really good luck for you to win, my friend. And of course, as is tradition, 30 seconds, floor is yours. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to shout out. Yeah, shout out to Harmon for, for uh, sponsoring this one with that top secret uh, sponsor name. And uh, big shout out to Chad. I mean, he should have won this race. I, I do feel bad for the guy, um, but he, he ran an awesome race. He was super fast. Yeah, really fast race from him, kind of unfortunate, but it does give the win to the person that started in pole, Sean Bradley. So, my friend, have a good night, and we will see you at the next one, okay? Sounds good. Thank you, boys. Yeah, of course. And I'll tell you what, James, uh, if you've got a second, let's see if we can grab Ben Harkham one more time. It looks like maybe whatever mic issue happened is uh, back up and running. Ben, how do you hear us now, friend? One final attempt here. I can hear you fine. There we go. Talk to me about your P2. Started P2, finished P2. But it wasn't as simple, was it? Oh, no, it wasn't simple at all. I I think I'm just now blinking for the first time ever since the green flag dropped. Yeah, and North Wilkesboro, it's a deceptively challenging track, isn't it? Yes, it is. I, I sent it in a couple of times, and I regretted it. It's a very slick track. I felt like we were driving on an ice skating rink tonight. Well, and I will tell you, track temps were up near 130 degrees Fahrenheit at a couple points. So, wow. for you, yeah, for you, how hard was it to conserve tires and keep things on the move? Well, conserving tires is not my best thing to do, so I tried my best to do it. <laughs> yeah, I think you did a very good job, though, to finish where you started, even though it wasn't exactly on paper how it went. But, of course, as is tradition here, Ben, 
30 seconds, the floor is yours. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to shout out, I will give that to you. Uh, shout out to Matt Harmon for sponsoring tonight's race. Uh, shout out to y'all for broadcasting the race, and it was an awesome race. It was an awesome race. Thank you, Ben, and we will see you on the next one. See you later. Well, James, the secret is out. The SRX comes. Yep. For next season on Tuesdays season 4 is almost rounded out here with triple bypass and the blink of all blinks in history yeah I I, I don't know he blinked and then come back like 15 seconds later I've never seen that normally when you go like that you're out out but apparently not he just carried on so there we go yeah I I don't know how to feel about that either. I, um, yeah, there, uh, that was a lot. But anyways, that's going to be where we call this broadcast because uh, for James, it is bright and early in the morning. The sun's probably trying to come up on his side of the world. And for me, it is well past my bedtime. But of course, on behalf of James, my name is Bradley. Me and James have taken you from start to finish. Be sure to tune into JP Broadcasting where we'll take you start to finish again for the next one. And good night. Oh, my God.